As this is our fifth podcast birthday, what better game to review next than the birthday burglary from Grand Gamers Guild, who we have to thank for handing over a review copy of this puzzle game. The birthday burglary is the fifth game in the holiday hijinks series of Escape Room in a Box games by Jonathan Schaefer, who also did the card art here. Package design and package artwork is by Josh Capel, with all of these games being published by our friends at Grand Gamers Guild. As you may have noticed, we aren't playing this in order, having reviewed number two, the Independence Incident last week, and now moving on to number five. This isn't a problem, as each of these 18-card puzzle games are standalone experiences. Now, this one in particular was just published last year and features a one-hour timer, though it may take your group longer than that. While the packaging states this is a game for one or more players, Board Game Geek lists it as a max of four and best at three, and I can't argue with that. Where Board Game Geek seems a bit off is the recommended age of 13+. plus. Yeah. We didn't see any reason this couldn't be a family game experience with even younger kids. One important thing to note is that you are going to need access to the web to play this game. The way it works as a full puzzle experience and only 18 cards is by being web-driven. You'll be interacting with the page for the game to input your answers, read the ongoing story and evolving story, get hints if you need them, as well as doing research for any of the puzzles you don't recognize. We haven't bothered doing unboxing videos for any of these holiday hijinks games, as they are a puzzle-based experience that can only be played once, and we don't want to spoil anything. Mm -hmm. Plus, there really isn't much to show off. You get a card holder with instructions on the back of it, and in that is an 18-card deck of cards. That's it. No other components. So each of the Holiday Hijakes games, or at least the two we've tried, play rather differently, but start the same. You read the instructions on the back of the card package, you scan the QR code and head to the game's webpage, read the little introduction there, start the timer, flip over the first card, and go. Compared to the Independence Incident, the Birthday Burglary seems to have been a very different type of puzzle. Yeah, where the last one was like a linear set of puzzles based on U.S. history that kind of told the story, this felt quite different. Most of the cards here show you scenes where you can choose to interact with the various objects you see. You quickly start accumulating a number of objects, some useful, some not, and then you can use those either with each other or with the objects on the cards. So more of a point-and-click adventure style experience? Yeah, exactly. And honestly, this one gave more of an escape room feel because of that. It also reminded me a bit of the Coded Chronicles games that we reviewed in the past that my family adored. Now, there are some traditional puzzles here as well. It's not all just figuring out what to use with what. And the games page on the web has an entire hint system to help you uh, if you get stuck, as well as a bunch of reference information for things you may need to solve the puzzles that the player players just may not know. In particular, the info section for this game contained a number of common ciphers like pig pen, ASCII, and number substitution, as well as Morse code. Now, each holiday hijinks game is given a difficulty. This one is listed as the easiest at one out of three. Now, you played this on Gwen's birthday. How did it go? I went pretty well. Having already done one holiday hijinks game before, we were able to dive right in. What we weren't expecting, though, was just how different it played how the different styles of puzzles were between the birthday burglary and the one we reviewed last week. It just had a very different vibe and feel where the last one felt like an interactive story where we're trying to solve puzzles to progress the plot. This felt more like an exploration adventure. Now that could be a good thing though. If you're not expecting it, that could be a wrench in your plans as well. Now, as for it supposedly being easier than the last one, like the, the last one was a 3 out of 3, this is a 1 out of 3. Let's just say our all-Canadian team did much better on a game about American history than we did on this. Now, there was one puzzle here that was based on a noisemaker that had us stumped for a long time. In the end, I think we were all overthinking it a bit too much and trying to do some arts and crafts to solve it that probably weren't necessary. Now, the one bonus this had is it did teach me something I didn't realize that was part of the game. If you take too long between entering answers, the game notices this, and on the web, the, the hint button starts to flash at you. Well, interesting to have the timer be proactive like that, but you point out a real problem with the sheer volume of puzzles and such that you play as a family. It's mm -hmm. hard to calibrate for the difficulty. It's far too easy to think outside the box when the solution might really be just right there in the box. 
Yeah, by the end, we still ended up with 4.5 out of 5 stars and would have been under an hour if it wasn't for that one puzzle, but we were just slightly over. Our overall, it actually took less time than the Independence Incident, and we got the same score. So I guess it was slightly easier uh, in the end, but it didn't really feel that way while playing. It felt more frustrating. Well, difficulty for this sort of thing can just be so subjective. Mm -hmm. I think of crosswords, where an easy puzzle for some people may be tough to a crossword regular if they aren't up on, for instance, current pop culture. Now, one thing that was better in the birthday burglary was the ability to play with more players. There were five of us, and due to the nature of the puzzles, there were things that different groups of us could work on in the same time. Which I think is good, as that means this game would be something that should work at a birthday party, albeit a small one, and keep more than just the birthday person involved. That's a big bonus, is you don't want to get this for a birthday party and then have everyone sitting around watching one person do the whole thing. Now, as um, an aspect I actually appreciate about this game is that it's a birthday game, actually. I, I can't think of any other hobby game that has a birthday theme. And this actually does a really good job of filling a niche I didn't realize I really wanted filled. But I would love to see more hobby birthday games. It's true. Well, there are many mass market birthday games out there most are the sort of frivolous games you'd at most play once a year on a child's birthday now while we all enjoyed the birthday burglary i can't help comparing it to the independence in it. and for whatever reason we had more fun with the first one what impresses me the most though about both games is just how different they are they're both by the same designer they both use 18 cards but each feels like a different game and a different experience that actually impresses me a lot it makes me even more curious to check out more games in this series. Well, with more than half a dozen of these games so far, it will be interesting to see how varied they all are in style. In the end, I can't help but recommend The Birthday Burglary for anyone who enjoys puzzle stylist style games and escape room in a box experiences, especially the ones that enjoy the escape room feel, because this one did feel more like an escape room than the last one that just felt like a series of puzzles. The low price point, portability, and ability to jump right in is hard to pass up for fans of this type of game. Now, while that's true for all holiday hijinks games, I think where the birthday burglary adds to this is being a perfect birthday gift. Being a perfect gift, this game could also be a great way to see if a friend, family member, or fellow, fellow gamer would enjoy this style of game. It could be the birthday burglary is the perfect first step into the larger world of puzzle games and escape rooms in a box plenty of which we've reviewed in the past if you're looking for a next step. If you aren't into puzzles and prefer pushing cubes, battling armies, and rolling dice, I can't see this game winning you over. But you can't beat the price if you just want to try this style of game out. There's even a print-and-play option available at Grand Gamers Guild at half the regular price, so perfect if you do want to give it a try. Well, that's it for our spoiler-free look at The Birthday Burglary. We can't help but be impressed by the amount of puzzle punch you get in such a small package with these holiday hijinks games. There are a lot of games out there that only use 18 cards. What's your favorite? Love Letter? Circle the Wagons? Let us know about it in the comments below. If you want more holiday hijinks, head over to the blog at tabletopbellhop.com where you can find written reviews of all of the Escape Room in a Box games we played so far.